Hello and welcome to another episode of the FESPA Hello. podcast, Up Close and Personal, with me, Richard Askham. We're broadcasting these podcasts out all over the world for the next few weeks, all to do with the show that's over my shoulder there, the new show that FESPA have created, the Personalization Experience, which will be in Munich uh, for three days in May. A chance, really, for the whole world, 360-degree view of what personalization is and what it can be and what it's for from brands, printers, retailers, uh, behavioral scientists, you name it, anybody that's got a view on, on what personalization is for, we want to come and get involved in this show so that we can get a really full view of what the opportunities are. And my guests today are joining me from Germany. Uh, good morning to Daniel and to Arai. How are you both? Oh, good morning. Thank you. Very good. Good morning. I'm well too. Thank you. Good. It's lovely to have you on this morning. Um, and I guess um, before we get into what you guys actually do uh, in terms of, of personalization, I'd, I'd like to hear from both of you really in the same way as I ask all of my guests, really what, what personalization means to you as a person. Daniel, do you want to go first? Sure, I can. So what does it mean for me personally? Especially it means emotion because for me, always when I get personalized products, it's basically for... I don't know, a present or something which reminds me of an event we did together with other people, right? Or when I hand something over, I put more energy into it, right? I make it personal. That's, that's uh, I think, the gist of it, right? For me personally. Yeah, absolutely. And Arai, what about you? It's uh, quite uh, similar, but I also think uh, there's this type of expression that you bring uh, when you're personalizing things for yourself. So you, you're kind of expressing something you know that is valuable to you like can be values can be like you know your general sense of style um but i think that's very important today because you know we live in a time where everyone wants to show like i'm very individual i have like my own taste my own style so personalization just brings this other new dimension into basically expression and th th there's a great um, sort of uh, expression, really, that we use here a lot in the UK. It's the thought that counts. Um, and so whenever you're, uh, you're sort of choosing gifts or or, or not, not necessarily personal gifts, but maybe business gifts or just just something where you want to make an impression, um, you know, you, you both see, um, you know, that extra little bit of detail of, of personalization as as the thought. And, and that's what counts. Is that right? Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's what counts. Yeah. Great. Well, let's get into uh, the conversation today. Thank you for, for that, for your, for your honest start to the day. Um, tell me a little bit, Arai, about your company and uh, where it sits in the in the world of personalization. So we're Imagely. Uh, we have been founded like five years ago. Um, and what we have started with is basically we brought photo editing to different application and software. Um, so we are an SDK. That means that this a tool that can be integrated uh, by developers into their software. Um, and after that, we, we added video as a new capability, as a new product. And after that, we thought, you know, what's, what's kind of the next step for us? Because photo editing is interesting, video also, but, you know, what is the grander scheme of things? So we build a new SDK, which allows you basically building any creative tool, workflow, or automation. Uh, and bring it into your own app, into your own so software, into your own ecosystem, right? And that is, uh, you know, in a in a fraction of time uh, compared to if you would build it yourself, which is really important, right? This is our unique selling proposition. And in terms of personalization, obviously, there is like this this idea anchored into our software, basically into the SDK that once you start using it into or building, build around it, build it on top. Um, on your software, then, you know, you will add capabilities to personalize either products, um, per, um, experiences, marketing, etc. So there's a huge variety of things that you can do with our SDK. Okay, so thank you, Daniel. Um, imagine I'm an idiot. It won't take long to imagine that, trust me. Um, and explain to me in, in absolute man on the street terms what what Iraya has just described beautifully that, that sort of I sort of understood a little bit. But imagine I understood nothing. Tell me, tell me the main points of what of what your software, what your products can do, and what they can offer. So, what, <clears throat> what our products would do normally, you choose a T-shirt, let's say a blank one, nothing is on it, and you want them to 
yeah, add a picture of you or your dog or anything. We provide the editing experience. All you do when you get to blank canvas, you can put on new stickers, you can put on new text, or you can even start with the predefined design you got from designer, really something shiny, and then you can adopt it. You can change stuff, right? You can add the itsy bitsy details, which make it yours, basically. So that's what, well, that's what we do. And the most interesting part for us that we realize is that Every product kind of needs a bit different experience, even in this editing part, right? So if you look at some big design tools like the Adobe Suite or anything, you can probably build a lot with that and design a lot, but it's pretty complicated, right? You, As a designer, yeah, for sure, you, you learned it over years and years. But as let's say the average Joe or even me. So when I want to design a shirt, well, I have an idea about it. Maybe I want to start from a certain st starting point, and then I want to just tweak it, make it mine, right? And that's that's why that this tweaking part can be totally different for shirt or for postcard or <clears throat> I don't know, think of any other product, right? For postcard, you want to have maybe just a process where you just have the postcard, add a picture, it's feed into a, bit a specific position, right? The text is a specific position already. You don't want to care with that stuff. But with a t-shirt might be different, right? There might be a patch already on your on your on your chest, like predefined stuff. And that's why I'm saying. It, it's always a bit different and our SDK allows basically our customers to really fit it to the product they are selling. Okay, okay. And so so maybe, sorry. maybe just to add something on top of that, um, yeah. which is also really interesting about our technology is it's not only the editing experience, it's also what you can basically do even without the editing experience. So I'll give you another use case. Let's say you have a B2B communication with your customers, you want to send out personalized postcards, right? Like you have thousands of customers in your database and you want to create like not the standard postcard for each one of them, rather than that you want to pull specific data and, you know, choose different templates according to that data and also like inject names and any other item that can be like hyper-personalized. And you can do that with our technology as well. So you can do these batch automations based on specific templates, based on specific design, but also based on the data that you have and combine it into an automation process. Uh, and then still, you know, your designers would still have the, uh, the, the, the option to post edit things, which comes with our tech as well. But just wanted to mention, we have this automation capability for B2B no, as well. That's great. And, and what I'm hearing is that it allows everybody that isn't a designer to be a little bit of a designer. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's not really what we focus on, right? Editing must be simple. It must be quick. Uh, and <laughs> you don't want to learn for 10 hours how to do, how to create a pass on the screen or something, right? We, we think about uh, a lot about exploratility, so exp exploring the interface, seeing a lot of presets, a lot of templates, a lot of options that you can just switch through even without knowing what some settings are. You never, you don't care, right? Just to get a really good output, but still having the feeling to have created something on your own. And is there any, because I, I can remember having a conversation years ago when I first started in, in, that, in the world of personalization around about 2008, 15 years ago. Wow. Um, uh, and, and somebody said to me that, that um, the majority of people when handed a blank piece of paper or a piece of card don't know where to start to design a greetings card. So, so what the industry did, and, and this was a big, a big greetings card retailer, um, they, they 95% designed the card for you and you came in and finished off the bit with your, with your name. What, what you're saying is you're actually quite happy if you want to start with a blank piece of paper and do as much of that creativity as you wish or as little as you wish. Is that, is that, am I getting that right? Exactly. I think so. As a year start from scratch, as you said, but as you said, many people, I guess, have to start. It's better for them to start from a well-designed template. Yeah. So you get the designers on board on the first step. So they will create certain styles, designs, etc. Then they decide in our system, basically, what should be changeable later by the user. And then you can ship out what we call templates in the consumer application. And they then either can just change their name but can also then add additional stickers. But it's all in control. And like I said, it depends now, in my opinion, at least, totally on the product you want to ship at the end and the, and the user base you're targeting, for sure, right? So if you're targeting B2B, for example, and they send out a thousand postcards to their customers, maybe they want uh, a bit of design control in the beginning, but then do data fed 
generation of, of postcards with addresses, maybe even changing, making it more personal or, or let's say special. Even each postcard could have, have a different background that's generated, right? Every time a bit different or with input data from, I know, some source. And and that can handle variable data as well. So so if 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 you want to send a thousand postcards out to a thousand different people and each one be slightly different and therefore personal, that that that's you can handle that. Yes, <clears throat> of course, hundred percent. That's what we do. So we can either do the one-off thing, but we can also have the designed ones and then feed it with some database or some other source and then generate thousands, hundred thousands of different uh, postcards or t-shirts or whatever you like. Yeah. Because this is always the question, Irai, that I hear when I'm when I'm at print events is it's not cost effective to print one of, of anything. Um, but the argument that I always give or try to give is you're not printing one, you're printing a million ones. And and so and so the the scale comes from understanding the ability that each of those ones can be different. Do do you do you have that sort of do you hear that sort of commentary from from your side? Well, I mean, to be honest, for now, like we're getting approached by customers, so I think they're already behind that barrier, so that they don't have that concern anymore. Um, I understand it when you know that would come up, but then again, I see just the way you, you said it, and also I think. The manufacturing is changing the way we manufacture, right? The hardware is also changing at a very fast pace. So things that seemed unfeasible 10, 15 years ago have become much more feasible today. So there's like these multiple things coming together. Hardware is changing, customers changing. Obviously, the market is changing, but also the software is changing through companies like us. And if you bring that together, obviously, there will be, you know, the industry will double down on this trend because I think it's inevitable because it's possible now. It's feasible. And that and that's the key phrase there, isn't it, really? Because I, I think one of the barriers to personalization growing even even more is that 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 let and I'm gonna try and be kind here, the the old world, let's call it, um, or um didn't believe that all of those things were possible and therefore never actually sold that solution into the very people who wanted it. One one of the goals of this show, by the way, the personalization experience, is to get all of those people that would be in that conversation in a room, uh, that, so that they can hear what you're saying and somebody can go, Well, I can do that, and somebody can say, Well, so you know, and I can do and then suddenly your solution is there because it already exists. Would would you say that that belief in the possible has been the biggest barrier so far? That's very difficult to tell, right? Because it's um, it's always many things coming together, which enables something to become more mainstream. Um, I think many industries already are aware that you can personalize, but still, you know, it's not very accessible. Um, but it becomes more and more accessible now, like coming through these different streams of, you know, development, like hardware, software, etc. I think there will be this inflection point where, again, it can become more of a standard once it's more integrated into different software, once it becomes more and more accessible. Yes. Don't go. Uh, there's something I realized the last years. So um, there's this trend that even the printing hardware gets more and more, more cheaper, even the high grade ones, which means even that smaller shops, not only the 100 plus uh, size companies, but also the 10 person company can now afford basically getting those printers maybe for sticker printing or for shirt apparel printing, whatever. And <clears throat> but this comes with new um, new problems because if you're a small shop again, you maybe have not 10 designers on board again, right? And uh, how do you do you create those templates? How do you do you do that all? And for example, we at this site are the ones that try to provide this editing experience out of the box. So you don't have to care, right? Do you, you get the printer, you get the editing experience and you're ready to go in a, in a minute, let's say, instead of doing it yourself. And we all know these days that users are used to let's say TikTok, Instagram, and all these tools and the experience of it, especially. So even, I guess, to sell something, you need, yeah, for sure, good shirts, good, good quality, etc. But also, I, I think the editing experience is really important because if you're stuck there, if you don't get what you wish for at the end and can't create your personalization apparel, then you're stuck, right? You won't buy it. So, so what you're saying is your own, your in-house design team and creative team is actually your software. Partially, but also it uh, we build it in a way that it also helps designers. So it's not 
always excluding them and saying, hey, you, you're, you're getting rid of you. That's not the case. But we also thought a lot about this going from the creational process, from this providing these designs, this base designs, let's say, pull over to shipping it into the applications, uh -huh. right? Because we always saw that there's a real gap because previously there, was, there is Adobe, you build it there, you made a great design, and then how do you get it editable into a consumer app? Sure. So how do you do that, right? <laughs> You're listening to the Up Close and Personal FESPA podcast with me, Richard Askham, and my guest today from Imagely, Daniel and Irai. Um, gentlemen, it's been fascinating so far. I'm, I, I want to move the, the conversation on really to to where you know we, we now know, I think, what what you guys do and what and what and what it allows. Where where would you like it to be? Where you know you've been going now five years. Um, you know, I, I guess you've been through all the growing pains of of a, of a, a classic sort of software startup in that time but are now established, got a great product, got a great audience. What can a show like the personalization experience help you do to, to be able to grow? Because if we grow the market, everybody grows with it, right? So so what, what, what do you see as the most important step over the next coming few years um, for your business? Um, I might want to say that the most important thing for us right now is awareness. Yeah. So this is how basically you will be able to help us um, because one thing I realized if we, we talk to many customers lately, um, they've been reaching out to us and they've been like very like, okay, and it's on different levels, right? We are talking with customers who have typical customer facing products in the print. We are talking with suppliers that built the hardware and they want to basically package our SDK is part of, you know, the experience they deliver to either businesses or merchants or even end customers. But we also have marketing departments reaching out to us and they're like, okay, we, we want to like personalize basically the experience for customers when let's say they, they buy a product. It's not only about the product they should be customizing, but more the communication we deliver. So the videos we create, the images that we create, the templates that we generate. We want to like do that. And then they came up with a list that was like one of the conversations I had recently. They came up with a list and they were like, okay, these are the requirements. And they were very like, I think we are asking too much, right? This is not going to work. And we were like, no, this, this is going to work pretty easy. Like this is why we built our software. And they were like absolutely like stunned because they couldn't believe that you know there isn't a, a solution that actually delivers all these things so for us it's really really important that we spread more awareness uh, across industries um the more i think the better and the more awareness there is i think the more we will also talk with different partners and different companies to bring our tech into you know their products i think i think you're absolutely right right and and uh, daniel one of the things that i hear a lot is uh, people have defined personalization as the one thing that they've seen and and maybe the one thing that they've seen has worked, and and you know, and and if you're not careful, you can pigeonhole it, it all into one thing. Um, but of course, it could be many things, and, and and lots of things. And and I guess Irai's point about awareness is is absolutely key because the print industry have been fantastically good at at building capability to deliver personalized products. But on the other side of the fence, the brands, the retailers, um, aren't aware. That all of those things are possible. So how how do we bridge that divide? I mean, you know, a show like this is a start, obviously. Um, but how do we how do we make that awareness much? Yeah, how do we make people aware of the awareness? <laughs> <clears throat> I'll be honest. I think as soon as the first merchants will really use that technology and provide its services, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that others will look at it and say, well. I have the old one. <laughs> I have this easy editor made in a t in ten days. Let's say whatever, right? Um, and I see that there's there can be a much better experience. And from what we know so far from the markets, that we already got feedback that even sales got up because the experience is better, right? Eventually, it's about profit. Which be fair, right? Uh, at least from the seller side. And if you are, um, I I I think if you see it in action. More and more, and we can provide demonstrators or even with our customers, you see that in the wild, as soon as this happens, <clears throat> I think there will be more awareness. And the interesting part I heard like from a customer was that they even changed their future roadmap because they know now what's possible with other stuff. So we see ourselves as enablers for things that you don't even may think about right now what's possible. 
That's really key, um, I think, is, is uh, you know, a, a belief in possible is a starting point to any conversation. Because if you if you don't, then you never pick the phone up and that conversation is never had. Um, you know, and, and I think guys like you, um, you know, and, and, and others across the world are enabling those conversations to be had. And then the people on the other end of that phone are going, wow, I had no idea. Um, you know that, that any of these things were possible they'd, they'd seen a personalized t-shirt yeah that's you know we, we know that that works but but you know where, where are the elements here I do you think that, that you'd love you know what's a goal for you really that you'd love what's the best conversation that you could have if somebody rang you today and said we're thinking about personalization what, what would look good for you um, I mean there's a wide range of things that would look good on us that's uh, the beauty of you know, our product as well but I think one thing I want to see and one thing that really makes us very happy if customers reach out to us, like just the one that I, you know, start talking about and they explore many different options, which would require a lot of our technology, right? The more they actually want to use, the happier we are because, you know, we built this very broad platform with this, you know, different capabilities. Um, we think also not only in terms of, we think in, in terms of process and workflow, right? Personalization is a workflow. It's not only a workflow for the person who personalizes a product, but there is also a before and after. Yeah. And he is like to reduce this workflow, the, the time spent in this workflow to a minimum. And so the more we own within this process, the better it is. The more we deliver from our solution to kind of, you know, facilitate that process, the better it is. We don't only facilitate, let's say, the, the editing part for the customer. We also facilitate automation. We also facilitate design publishing, like Daniel uh, explained. Where are the templates coming from, right? Like, how does that process look like? Because templates are super essential for a quick personalization experience. So we become very happy if we have like these customers knocking on our door and they're like, you know, telling us about their challenges. And we see that, that, that you know, there is a broad, basically application of our uh, software, you know, that we can basically apply now to, to, to their uh, problem. And this is great. So once, once we solve awareness, then Daniel, what, what all we then need is adoption, right? Yes, I guess. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that, right? <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> but I see, I, I can see that this this happens actually. So if if I look at these as a shop, there are shops that can do personalization already. I don't want to judge if good or bad, but they are doing it step by step. Make and there's a big market, it seems also. Um, and I see that even the shirts, the one off, isn't that expensive for me or uh, another person. So if you get the same quality and can design it yourself, you're more like 40, 50 years ago, if you, you were rich and get your own T-shirt, right? And we are not only talking about printing, we're also talking about tailoring it, et cetera, right? This, this printing is just one part, yeah. but it could be your own perfect fit T-shirt and then even saying it's mine. That could be the simplest version of it, right? And it could also have a really great design or even these days something which is unique, let's say, in an, <laughs> these days pretty famous uh, AI generator design or something, mm -hmm. which only you have and it's still the same quality as if you would buy or even better, a T-shirt normally from stock, which thousands of people have. I guess the appeal is very high, but the process must be easy. That's the important part. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Now, the customer experience is, is, is everything, I think, especially in, in the world that we're in right now. Um, uh, final question for you both. Uh, which is more important, do you think, to the end recipient, price or individualized? I think it's very difficult to answer this off the bat because it depends on the product, I guess. Um, there is always price competition, but it depends on which you know part of the market you address. Uh, from what we have seen, customers like from our from our customers, like from what they report, is that customers are definitely willing to pay a premium. Um, and so, you know, to individualize their products. So it doesn't seem to be a huge concern, but obviously there will always also be like a, a, a you know, there's an end, of shopper. There's an end point yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I, the, the reason I asked the question and, and I'll ask the same one to you, Daniel, is, is uh, you know, a, again, through my experience with, with personalizing things, it's always been about adding value, but there's a difference between value and cost. Um, and, and if you can understand that the value sits with the, with the individual feeling as though they've got something 
that's you know got a great worth to it it's not about price it's about the value of that individualization so i'll, I'll sort of ask you the same question but reframe it uh, that way around do, do, do you see what i'm saying <laughs> yes I, I totally see what you're saying um i also guess that personalization in many like it's with, with, if it's connected with value and emotions and and all these things you will definitely or i can say buy uh, buy something which is a bit more expensive but there's always be, be honest uh, if it's getting too expensive then at some point there's this this, this thin line where it's an okay well i'd like to have it but it's maybe a bit too expensive now but i'm seeing this i see is a solvable problem these days yeah. the price yeah. um it's different scenarios the shirts itself or the shipping whatever right and all the things and even again i'm coming back to us right so if we can shorten and also make the software much much cheaper also to develop uh for our customers then they, even they don't have to invest so much so many so much money in all their technology infrastructure because as you can imagine this is also pretty expensive and if you want to develop a full solution for everything from scratch somehow this needs to get back into the company's pockets right at some point and uh, if they could start from somewhere like with our software or maybe others then they get fa faster to time to market and save probably also there a lot which then they can in turn reduce the cost of the uh, of the individual shirts right yeah so, so closing the gap again that's basically yeah, the goal absolutely. yeah Closing the gap is a, good, is a good place to finish. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on the Up Close and Personal podcast this morning. Irai Bazaar, Daniel Hauschild from Image Lee, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank too. you, Richard. Bye-bye.